Hello Milky Friends, Milkstool here with you for another Idol Heroes video. How are you? I hope you are well. I did make a video this week. I thought the audio didn't record in, but then when I reviewed my video last, it actually did. So if you're wondering why there wasn't a video this week, I did make it and I'm probably going to release it. It's going to be late. You're going to be like, well, Milkstool, this is kind of too late. Um, but if you enjoy my scintillating commentary, you can watch it. If you don't, don't bother. Uh, but this video is basically about, what are we talking about? I'm going to talk about guild settlement uh, and what I'm doing with my coins because I got asked that question. So if you haven't worked out by now and you haven't been on Reddit or you don't look at Reddit, basically the consensus on the best strategy is you basically are supposed to tell your guild to do each one of these kind of like one by one on a different day. So they're, they're, take a step back. What's the point of guild settlement? The point of guild settlement is for each of you and your guild mates to do quests every single day. Um, and when you decide to do a quest on your own in a particular faction or a class, I think you add, what is it, like 4,200 of these reputation points to this bar. I think that's how it works. Is that right? Where are the instructions? 4,200. Doesn't give you the numbers. It's about 4,000, 4,200. Um, if someone does the same thing, like say you and your friend do the, oh, let's, let's do another example, Abyss. So no one in my uh, guild has put heroes into, well, done a quest in Abyss. And how you can tell when people put, uh, do a quest in a particular faction or classes, you basically they get 138 reputation points for them every time they do a quest in that particular uh, class or, or uh, faction. And so here you can see the people that have contributed. Why are you loading? But the point is 100, 136 reputation points. So every time someone does a quest, settlement quest, you get 136 uh, reputation points. So it, it counts on you and people in your guild to like invest in um, the same guild or class up to a point, right? So that's, that's how the mechanics work. If you're wanting, you know, how do I get these reputation points? You know, how does everyone sort of doing the same one contribute, right? Everyone doing the same guild contributes 136 reputation points every time you do a quest. Um, and if you pick the quest yourself for that particular class or, or faction, um, it's 4,200 reputation points. And the point is, you know, you're supposed to get a certain number of reputation points. And when you hit that cap, so for example, when you get to 5,000, uh, when you get to 5,000 reputation points, an accession, accession quest comes up and you pass the accession quest, you go to the next level and there's different levels, right? So everyone starts out and different and you go all the way up to exalted, right? Basically. And so uh, obviously uh, the higher the level you go, the more of these gold coins you get as well as these, uh, what do you call them? The the glory, oh fuck, I don't even know the name of the currency anymore. <laughs> the thing that you need for tech, whatever that thing is, uh, when you click on it, it doesn't even tell you what it is. That thing, that thing that you need for tech, basically. The gray, the gray stone for tech. Uh, I've, you know, we don't play this game for a while, you just forget the name of everything. Guild coin. See, if that's called the guild coin, what the hell is this called? Gold coin. Gold guild coin. All right, let's screw it. Let's just call it the gold guild coin and the gray guild coin. That just makes it much more easy for me. But the official name for all those who actually care about it is Guild Solidus. Great, that totally makes sense. And yes, if you're wondering, I completely fucked up last week. I didn't use all my Steam buns. Um, it goes to show how much I care about this game. You know, the fact that I've ne in the whole few years I've played this game, I've never forgot to spend my campaign currency it's starting to happen where, you know, I'm just slowly starting to lose interest in this game. <laughs> Leaving that aside, so I've got to claim this, claim this. Uh, back to guild settlement. What should I spend my currency on after I sort of, you know, oh, my, I invest in this? And sorry, the strategy, just to uh, close the loop on the discussion. The strategy is basically you got to get, you're supposed to upgrade each one of these um, classes and abyss one by one right? Rather than say, for example, everyone just focus on forest the whole time and try and get it all the way up to basically exalted. Um, the math and the strategy, apparently I haven't done the math in Excel, but apparently it's, but you're better off just telling everyone, look, 
just go from indifferent to neutral first for each one of these. And then once you've done that, um, go back to the top, get everything from neutral to the next level friendly, right? Go, and when you made it all the way down, go back to the top, etc., etc. With my guild, it doesn't look like we're going, that's going to happen. Um, you just look at where people invested stuff. So uh, like Abyss, no one really has an Abyss hero. Like Ignis, mm, Morax, eh. You know, are they going to kill anyone? Maybe that in different level. Yeah, they will. But the reality is no one's got... I think Abyss is going to be hard to, to do. Um, I'm surprised Assassin is hard to do. I thought people had Assassins. But maybe, again, people just adhering to what I tell them and they're doing it one by one. Anyway, when you get enough of those Guild Solidius or Gold Guild Coins, um, you can spend in the store. And the store has been completely refreshed. And so you're probably asking yourself, well, first things first, don't ever press this restock button. I don't know why they have that there. Maybe it's because after you've bought everything, you probably have to do restock it and you just got to bite the bullet. <laughs> Which is fair enough because it says limit one, limit one, limit one. But in terms of what the priority of spending or what's value, right? Um, I would say, look, if you're looking at copies or like food, uh, so you have a choice between like say, I don't know, these four star shards as well as this five star shard. Uh, what do you do? What do you do? Right? So you, we know you need eight of these four star ones to get a five star thingy bob eight and some spare change as in some three star food. So eight times 800, 6,400, this only costs 6,000. So my inclination is to buy this first before you actually buy this four star food. So for the first time ever in the history of, uh, idle heroes, the five star food is actually better value than the four star thing. <laughs> Ironically, I mean, that's never happened. Usually this is cheaper. The sum of these bits, four star shards is cheaper than just one of these, but here we have it. They've started doing weird things. <laughs> so if you're looking for food, buy this first before you buy this four star stuff. But then if we go to these hero copies, I mean, if you're short a copy, rather than use it one of those hero selection chests, I would almost say just buy it off here. Um, only because it might, it's, it's that hero selection chest has way more optionality than here, right? Here, the the kind of heroes you can get is kind of limited. Uh, so if you're starting out, Penny and Horus are obviously useful for if you're early in mid game. Cthulhu to an extent as well, if you're trying to clear Seal Land Abyss and Garuda as well, if you're trying to clear Seal Land Forest. Uh, but then after that, the value of the heroes, it's up and down. Like Sherlock's still there in relevant ticks you need for like a lot of places like uh, Shadow Seal Land as well as Aspen Dungeon. Ignis is like you need two Ignises basically, an E5 and then a 10 star for a lot of situations, but primarily for void content. You need the 10 star one to die to feed energy, uh, and then the just the E5 one just to stick around, just keep everyone alive. Rogan's still useful for void content as well, probably not as useful for PvP, but you just never know. And then these dark heroes, I don't know why they're so expensive. Like, Carry is still like there, but Boy, oh boy, 378 for Tara. That's like, you dreaming? Like, I don't know who's dumb enough to buy this. Like, literally no one. Uh, for 378, you should have just made this like a dark light hero selection chest. Honestly, that would have been just far more useful rather than these static heroes. In fact, you know, these, I don't know why they always give you static heroes. I think they should just make it like, I don't know, 250,000, 378,000, whatever it is and just offer a hero selection chest in its place. That's just infinitely more useful rather than having these static heroes, which slowly become out of date like over time. And then you have to redesign this whole thing again. So why do you do that? Why don't you just stick with a chest, right? Um, and even if the chest is like a chest that, you know, it's a snapshot at this point in time, you know, up to the, all the heroes developed now, these are the kinds of heroes you can from this chest. That's fine. It's still way more useful than just having these static heroes here. Uh, so if you need copies of heroes, look, I would say get it here over using uh, a hero selection chest because a hero selection chest, like I said, gives you more optionality and optionality. Having options is always valuable uh, and uh, usually in financial markets, you have to pay for it. So if you say, you know, well, Milk Store, I don't really want to get a... I don't really want to get any food or copies because I've got enough. What else can I spin it on? Well, then you can spin it on like this gear, basically, right? And so here the choice is between obviously this red stuff, these these artifact artifact shards. So 
to use as food for Ormus's workshop to upgrade your artifacts or the armor stuff, right? The armor, again, to, to upgrade your armor sets. Um, so choice between four star and five star. Again, you need what, like four copies of this? Four copies of this to upgrade to a five star. So what's four times seven? 28,000 compared to just buying it outright, 21,000. So almost certainly just buy the five star stuff first before you even think about buying the four star stuff first. Only because, like I said, you need four copies of the four star stuff plus, come on workshop, where are you? Gold to, do you need four star? Or is it three? Oh, it's three. So you need three plus gold um, to get you to the next level, right? Yeah, three plus gold. So I take that back. It's not four. Is it still better value if it's three? Uh, where are we going? Where are we going? I'm just confused and I'm old. <laughs> What's my name? <laughs> um, so we go back and look. So three times 7,000. 21,600. So is it 21,600? Yeah, it's line ball. So basically, look, just buy this first because then you don't have to pay the gold to fuse three of these together. Um, but then after that, you can if you if you really need the uh, what do you call the this kit, this gear, this armor gear, uh, then buy this black stuff. It's it seems to be worth it. Like you know, you can just use the gold. So a lot of you are saying to me, well, milk store, you know, I've got a lot of armor lying around. I don't really need more armor. Um, and that's fine. If you've got lots of armor, then don't buy it. Then you can buy these artifact fragments or you can buy food, right? It's really up to you in terms of what your needs are. Like the brilliant thing about the shop now is I think there's a lot more selection. So you can tailor it to where you are in the game, what your needs are. But like me, myself, personally speaking, like I just need way more uh, six star armor. That's what I'm after, like just six star armor. So then I can upgrade into class specific faction sets. Um, and why is that? Because look, look how many heroes I have. I have like 20 whatever E5 heroes and I'm sick to death of swapping armor kits. Um, and bullshit things like where you, you know, th these three one armor setups, uh, they like infuriate me because now I've got three pieces of mage gear that I can't use anywhere because this asshole has just decided, to, you know, for the attack build, he only needs one piece of the six star mage gear or the uh, specific six, yeah, one piece of the specific six star mage gear and three pieces of the generic one. Uh, you just make like two pieces use three pieces useful useless for me so thanks a lot um so for me like for me because i'm lazy and i'm tired of swapping i just want a lot of six star armor sets so then i can put on all 20 um, four, th however many goddamn heroes i have right now um like i just if i can because it, it just helps me out for things like guild war it helps me out for things like void or just anything i just not having to worry about constantly switching armor uh is a big deal for me right see like you know this guy's without two pieces um everyone's pretty much dressed but like see she's not dressed he's not dressed right so if i can get to a point where i can be lazy about it i would really like that like a lot but then if you say, okay, Milk Stool, I think for all, the reality is I think a lot of you are going to go for the artifact fragments because you probably haven't been religiously buying artifact food like I have from the merchant on uh, Celestial Island. So if you need artifact food, because boy, oh boy, do you need to sacrifice a lot of artifacts. Then you have a choice between store. If we go here, you have a choice between this red one, this exclusive red one, as well as this orange one. Uh, look, the reality is you have to be in a pretty senior guild to be on level 35. Even I'm not on level 35, and I'm surprised. My guild's been around for a very long time. We're still on level 34. So then you're probably asking, well, Milk Stool, what's the best one to get? Go to my spreadsheet, you know, that gigantic spreadsheet where I keep a whole bunch of data. Um, we can basically, for each of these artifacts that we have here, this is the essence that you get from Ormus's workshop when you like sort of recycle it or uh, sacrifice it. So basically, if we know how much essence we get for each type of artifact, then you're like, well, milk stew, don't I just divide the number of essence I get um, by the, the the cost, right? So then you effectively, you're, you're looking out for, well, or we can divide the amount of gold sold us or gl gold glory coins divided by um, the number of essence you get. So then you you can see how much for each artifact type it costs, how much gold coin it costs for like one essence basically. So let's just do that, right? So we got, uh, and I know some of your mobile phones, you're like, milk will just make the screen bigger. All right, so here we go. So if we do that, right, and we know the gold costs, 
gold coin cost. All right, so you can't get purple. You can get red. Red is 5,400. Uh, red exclusive is 16,200. And orange is 72,000. All right, so then how much essence do we get for each one of these puppies? Essence, essence. I wish you can just copy. We can just copy. Right, then cost per essence, right? And you want the lowest cost, basically. That's what we're looking out for. So, if we do the math, I mean, immediately you can see this is a fucking ripoff, right? Um, so, if we do that divided by that, yeah. So, basically, what the math is saying is if you're going to buy... Uh, like these artifacts for, for food, right? Buy the red one, then this one, and then this one, right? Because, I mean, you would argue, if you had a bunch of things that you need to buy, you basically wouldn't buy this one. This is, seems like a giant fucking ripoff, just relative to how much essence you get for each gold glory coin, right? Because if you look at the math, it's saying it's gonna cost you 22 gold coins to per essence for, for this one. Uh, it's three times that for this one, right? Three times the cost. And then miraculously, it's like four times the cost for this one. So like, if you're buying this orange one, unless you literally had nothing else to buy in the shop with this gold coin, then fine, go ahead and buy it. Because if you've got nothing else to buy and nothing else is valuable uh, and you just need uh, food for your artifacts, then it, it doesn't actually matter what the cost is, right? You should just buy it, right? But in terms of priority, in terms of value, it's this one, then this one, and then this one, right? So, look, I think there's a lot of optionality, um, but unfortunately, they have limits on this. So, unfortunately, you're going to have to reset the stock at some point in time. I would say, you know, my personal strategy now that I see that, I really don't want to give them $20,000 for nothing. Um, so, my strategy, my, my strategy is probably I'm going to buy all the armor. I'm going to buy all the artifacts. Probably going to buy all the food. Only then am I going to restock because again, you don't want to just keep hitting the restock button so you can buy this for like you know twenty thousand a piece. Does that make it worth it then? No, that's sixteen thousand two hundred. No, so that's just silly. You're not going to keep hitting this button because um, you just want to buy a couple of things, um, and they, because they limit it, you can only buy it once, right? The reality is that's not going to happen. Like just before you hit spend, make the reset button a thing, hit it. You should absolutely just buy everything, right? So that value analysis is kind of redundant, right? I would buy all the food. I would buy everything on this page and everything on this page. The only thing I wouldn't buy, like I said, the copies, if you don't need the copies, just there's no point. You're just wasting. You might as well just spend the $20,000 and then just reset the food and the armor. Um, I don't know anyone dumb enough to buy Tara, uh, let alone, well, I mean, these other heroes. Like, they are useful if you don't have enough copies, like I said buy that instead of using a chest but hey guys that's the video thanks for watching hope you found that useful i don't know if that's the same strategy that you have i know a lot of you actually uh you know debate between artifacts essence or uh, artifacts of sacrifice and artifact essence or the armor set there's my thoughts go away and prosper thanks guys see you next time